Okay, here we go. 10 a.m. Thursday morning. I'm Jason Rohde, live from Nomad in Montreal for Canadian culture through film. I don't know how you like that I treat this as a kind of a show. Um, I assume you do. You're all media savvy. And uh, we have the privilege of coming together on, on Zoom. And, but I like to make this available to, to other people. So, uh, so that's why I'm always keeping everybody else in mind. Today, we're, um, normally this would be your spring break, so I felt funny about uh, like giving you a big class today, but it's not really a big class. It's kind of a silly movie um, initially. We're, we're talking about the Quebec identity. Um, what we've looked at already is uh, we've looked at documentaries and like this kind of experimental kind of filmmaking. We've uh, looked at Francois Girard's films to give you some Canadian context. We've looked at indigenous people's culture. So there's all these kinds of Canadian cultures. It's like such a wide spectrum. I'm, I'm starting to think it might even be a broader spectrum than, than the American culture. Uh, in a way, you know, because we're more segregated. There's so, m there's I think like 35 million Canadians across Canada and we're bigger territory than the States and you have about 10 times um, the amount of the, the population. So because all these cultures end up being a little segregated, like to use the indigenous people up north, for example, um, they're, you know, of course they've developed a culture way before we were, uh, us uh, Europeans were, were ever even here. So the, the, today I, I want to start zooming in on, on where we are. So uh, on Quebec. So we've looked at the indigenous, we've looked at Canadian culture, with, especially with Cronenberg and some of the tax shelter uh, films. Um, but uh, hello. <laughs> Uh, but today we're, we're looking at uh, specifically Quebec culture. Next week we're going to go to Montreal, uh, the Montreal identity. So before we get there, we're going to look at a movie called Elvis Graton, uh, which, which is a movie that, uh, well, I'll just start it and, and I'll keep talking about it. So Elvis Graton, when I was a kid, this is a movie that basically says, this is who you are, Quebec people. And it, it laughs at that in... Um, <laughs> it's, it's totally satirical, but at the same time, like we couldn't help but recognize ourselves in this, for better or for worse. And... Uh, <laughs> And you're going to see the influence of American culture on, on Quebec culture, on Canadian culture, but specifically on Quebec culture, through um, Elvis's adoration of, uh, of everything American. So I'm going to be translating a lot of this for you along the way. And of course, I've, I've cut so much of it out. La gang de la commission scolaire va être là? Ouais. Oh, ouais, ouais, ouais. Le Chavin? Ah, lui aussi? Ouais. Minette. Linda, c'est Shirley. C'est pour le voyage à Las Vegas. That's for the, the trip in hey. Vegas. Je te dis? Ouais, 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 ouais. Elle est bien, bien, bien contente. Elle a bien hâte. Ouais. Puis elle va te rappeler pour le party. Oh, yeah. This sequence goes on much longer where he, he does a whole kind of start to sing in front of the, the mirror. So he goes, <laughs> it's not spicy enough, your spaghetti, so he adds salt. 
So everything on the table is kind of descriptive as well, like the mayonnaise, the, the big thing of Coke. There's a, the spaghetti, the, the white bread. They're watching like an Elvis impersonator competition. Elvis Wong. Elvis Wong. Some, some racist banter about to come up. Elvis Wong, un chinois, ben ça c'est le bout. Pourquoi pas un Pollock, un Wops, un Egg, ta caillette. Un chinois, un autre qui s'en vient voler nos jobs. C'est ça les Canadiens français. Une belle gang de sang dessin. Au lieu de s'entraider, ils se mangent entre eux autres. That's Quebecers for you. Réussit, bam, as soon as one of them caler. succeeds, everybody tries to bring him down. Un chinois. Okay. Okay. Pareil comme toi et ton frère Méo. Hey, le gros. Ouais. Mais pas Méo oui. que les chinois. Méo. Just like your brother Méo. Il a jamais pris, moi, que je me parte en business. Jamais. He never liked that I started in business. Un vrai Canadien français. A real French-Canadian. Un paresseux. Jealous. Un mangeur de Hey, le gros, je t'ai déjà dit de pas toucher à ma famille. Ta famille. En toi, quoi, si c'était yang de moi, moi, je partirais rester aux States. If it was just me, I'd go live in the States. Je vendrais tout de suite. Je m'arrêterais un beau condom minion. <laughs> I'd get a nice condom minion. Parce que les autres, ils l'ont l'affaire, les Américains. Because the Americans, they got it. Regarde, Elvis, lui, il l'avait. Look at Elvis, he got it. So you weren't uh, the guy who plays the cinematographer, by the way, is Pierre Falardo. He's the director of the film. This film dates from 1980, and Falardo is a is a real intense separatist. He's like anti-Canadian in a way and and pro-Quebec. So this satire, laughing at Quebec culture. Qu'est-ce qui arrive avec ton contrat, là, avec la commission scolaire? Ça avance, ça avance. Euh, justement, j'ai vu la part à l'Assemblée. It's about showing Quebecers kind of their true nature. But, well, that's the way he sees it anyway. Il va falloir absolument pacter l'Assemblée. Puis on va avoir besoin de monde pour vendre des cartes d'avant. Ça, c'est un mot du bonhomme. Il faut absolument qu'il passe à la convention si on va avoir une chance de se débarrasser de cette gang de barbus puis de socialistes. Il doit être un petit peu plus à droite, mon homme. Ouais, ça. Ça fait assez longtemps qu'il rit nous autres. Il faut arrêter ça. Encore plus à droite. <rire> C'est fini, ça, les séparatistes. Il va falloir les mettre au pas, eux autres, puis leurs chums, les unions, puis les professeurs qui endoctrinent les jeunes. Dans We're going to have to line them up, the unions, the teachers. Make them walk straight. C'est fini, ça. It's over. Avortement. Abortion. Bien-être social, on va mettre un stop à ça. Puis la loi 101, qu'il euh, C'est là que les lunettes, mon bob. Law 101 forces people to put both French and English. If they want to put English on their uh, storefront, they have to put French first. And you always need to have French as well. Who's complaining about that? 
fait vivre les chômeurs et les assistés sociaux avec mes taxes. S'ils en veulent de l'argent, Chris, qu'ils fassent comme moi, qu'ils travaillent. I'm tired of paying for social ça, services. Ouais. If they want to work, they can work, work. If they want money, they can work like I do. S'ils en veulent des jobs, il va falloir arrêter de cracher ces Américains qui veulent venir investir ici. If they want jobs, you gotta stop spitting on Americans that are trying to come here and give us jobs. Mais qu'ils de nous mettre des bâtons dans les roues, OK? Leurs histoires d'indépendance. Their stories of independence. That's stupidity. It's craziness. You gotta stop asking ourselves questions. Don't move! Canada is the greatest country on earth. It's the richest. De toute façon, moi je veux pas parler de mes montagnes rocheuses. Puis des pauvres, il y en aura toujours. Ça. Tu vas voir qu'avec Grolo, on va mettre de l'ordre là-dedans. C'est ça qui manque aujourd'hui. L'ordre. De l'ordre. That's what's missing. Order. Order. On va savoir une fois pour toutes où c'est qu'on s'en va. Les révolutionnaires, on va nous mettre un peu de plomb dans la tête. Faut être réaliste, Carlis. <laughs> Faut être réaliste, Carlis. Gotta be realistic. <laughs> nous autres. Ils m'empêcheront pas de vivre, moi. Puis avec Grolo. With Grolo, I'm gonna have my uh, my beer permit. So Grolo is the guy they were talking about at the beginning of this scene about uh, getting him to uh, to win. I don't know what it is like winning the, as mayor of the city, perhaps. So Falardeau uh, died actually in 2009. He made a bunch of films. He made like, I don't know how many sequels to this film, but none of them have the level of social commentary that this one had. I mean, it's very edgy. And even as kids, we'd, we'd watch this movie uh, and love it. I sk I'm skipping a lot of scenes here. And it, it kind of reminded me of Dumb and Dumber and the humor, but with much, which, with a much heightened level of commentary, but the humor, like a lot of the scenes I, I skipped, are, are kind of like Jim Carrey silliness, where he's uh, he's falling over himself, tripping over himself, you know. So just a little more about Falardeau. Um, he was an intense separatist. Um, and he also, because there's always like, sometimes there's some racist connotations like in some of his films, but I think he's more like um, looking down upon that. He's satirizing it. Because he's said that he doesn't care where people are from. If they are uh, Quebecers who believed in separatism, then they are his sisters and brothers. So, um, 
So you gotta, you, you really have to keep in mind that everything, they're really laughing at this as opposed to glorifying it. Yeah! Julien, Julien Poulain, who's the, the actor in this, he, um, he co-wrote the film, actually. Vous êtes en lutte? Oui, oui. Vous euh, lutteur? Non, non, non. Entraîneur, arbitre? Moi, j'ai un garage, un gros garage. I got a garage, a big garage. Allez-vous en vacances à Santa Banana? Going on vacation? Oui, oui. Santa Banana? C'est la première fois? Non, c'est la troisième. Oh, it's the third time. À quel I'm hôtel going. vous allez? Which hotel? El Colonial. Ah, ben, El Colonial. Oh, dis-nous autres, c'est une dose au bout. Ah, c'est tout. <laughs> à ta santé, est <laughs> You're Canadian? You, you, you have the accent. I'm a Canadian Quebecois. A French, Canadian, French. Un Américain du Nord, français. An American of the French North. Un francophone. A francophone. Un Québécois canadien. A Quebecer Canadian. Un, un Québécois d'expression canadienne, française, française. A Quebecer française, of expression française. of Canadian, French, On French. On est des Canadiens. We are Américains, Canadian, Francophone, American, Francophone, Nord. of America, of the North America. On est, on est des Franco-Canadiens du Québec. Ça. Des Québécois-Canadiens. C'est ça. So that, that, that scene uh, is almost the, the, the only reason I'm showing you that movie. Just to give you an idea of how messed up the Quebec identity can be. Not that it is, but it can be. So there, there's a lot of these scenes. That's the, the kind of scene I cut out. I just left a hint of it, but this goes on for like three, four more minutes. They end up getting burnt on the beach because they, they put on um, toothpaste instead of, uh, of uh, sun uh, lotion. Augusto Ricochet, Presidente Avia de la Republica de Santa Banana. Eu digo muchas gracias a mi amigos de Washington y del Pentagón por su colaboración para estapar la revolución. La Santa Banana no exista la explotación. A los crates ouais, que parlan contra la internacional American Banana Company y contra el capitalismo norteamericano, yo digo ouais, no, no, ouais, no, ouais. no, no. Yo declaro guerra al comunismo. Hey, lui, c'est ce qu'il veut. Bananas 
Ça me dérange. C'est un bout, il a pas la langue dans sa poche. Si, là, c'est Americanos, abandonnant son table, banana. Finito, Coca-Cola. Finito, Elvis Ball. Finito, Mickey Mouse. Finito, Elvis Presley. Finito, Hollywood. Finito, Miami. Et on dit go, no, à la samba de la revolution. Oui, oui. Viva, viva, la rumba militara. Mañana et siempre. Viva la Republica de Santa Banana. Viva America et viva Augusto Rico. Banana au muerte. Banana. So in, in 1980, oh, the boy, they got it, the Americans, he says again. So in 1980 in Quebec, there was a referendum. So there was a vote for people to, uh, to vote whether they wanted to um, separate from the rest of Canada or not. I remember this, I was super young. But I was born in 77, so I was like three years old. But actually, the ram ramifications of this are, are huge. And they had another referendum a little later, like 10 years later or so. But anyway, we voted no that in 1980, and we voted no again. So this movie is kind of a reaction to, to that no um, for those separatists. <laughs> So there's a few other scenes that, that represent, um, you know, kind of the, the, the poverty uh, in Santa Banana, this uh, fictional country, um, and uh, the, the, the outright uh, slavery that's represented there, and how it's, it's a vacation spot for, for Americans or for uh, Canadians, but uh, it's quite another reality for them. Canadian citizen? Yes. Where did you go? A Santa Nothing to declare. Oh, yes. I bought a, a crocodile. It is strictly forbidden to bring back food. No, no, no. It's not uh, for eat. It's a gift for my sister-in-law. She's just there. It's a crocodile skin handbag. Oh, ye yes. Uh, just a bag. A bag. That's all. Oh, no, no, no. That's I have all. a couple of things, you know, for Van Hill. Yeah, I see you. Oh, that's good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Viva next. Happy to be back. Welcome home. Yes. Where are you coming from? This is the scene that followed directly after. I skip a lot of scenes, but in this case I didn't skip. I thought it was fun, you know, that they come, as soon as they're back, they're like in the harsh winter. Not Elvis Gaton again. Okay, so many scenes later, one where they even have like a little chapel for Christmas with all like Elvis statuettes, a bunch of scenes. This is the conclusion of the film. It's a Christmas show. So the commentary is that <clears throat> because of his success <laughs> as an Elvis impersonator, he became bloated. 
He went on vacation and, and gained a little too much weight for, for his costume, and it's about to cost him his life. Now this here scene actually ends with the, the coffin falling and the, he, he ends up putting his finger in his eye, um, which is an expression here, kind of like putting your, your uh, foot in your mouth in a way. The, the, I don't need to tell you the tackiness of, of all of this, you know, the, obviously the, uh, the Elvis adoration, the, the food they eat, how badly educated they are, how backward thinking they all are. This general tackiness is, um, is a main part of the, the, the commentary, of course. But the, the strange thing is that all of Quebec loved this movie and recognized themselves in it. And Falardeau later regretted putting so much slapstick in the film because he felt like the, the commentary was lost to the, to the Quebec nation. This film was incredibly popular. I mean, everyone has, everyone's seen it of my generation. The play on TV all the time. So he's resurrected and, and uh, so follows the the, the rest of the films. In the second film, he ends up becoming a pop star. In the third film, he ends up becoming a... Peuple à genoux, attends ta délivrance. Uh, people on your knees, wait, await your deliverance. This is a title, uh, a, a, a line, a phrase that he uses in a film that I'm going to show you just after. Um, so I, I'm fast forwarding through this, um, this credit, these credits here, these end credits, just to show you how he put Elvis to everybody's name. And I mean everybody, which is pretty amazing that he got everyone to come on board with that. Now, this next film, Le Temps des Bouffons, <coughs> it's kind of, Le Temps des Bouffons would translate to uh, The Time of the Clowns. This is 1985. Every year, the elite, the Canadian elite, gathers for a banquet of the Beaver Club. Here, no one is possessed, only possessors, with their fake beards and fake hats. Politicians, judges, business people, owners of, uh, of malls, bunch of people that speak bilingual. Like in Ghana, they revere the English. Here, the masters remain masters and the slaves remain slaves. Les bourgeois pleins de marde d'aujourd'hui, déguisés en bourgeois pleins de marde d'autrefois, célèbrent... The bourgeoisie, uh, full of shit of today, bon are dressed like the bourgeoisie, full of shit of yesterday. Par la force des armes, les marchands anglais s'emparent du commerce de la fourrure. In 1860, Chaque année, the English managed to take over the... Ils mangent, ils boivent, ils chantent. The fur trade. Ellis, Smith, Frobisher, 
They're all the, the English that ended up taking over the country, stealing it. It's the mafia of the time. They buy everything. They buy land, honor, medals, power. The thieves become slowly honorable citizens. They, they launder money by becoming bankers, politicians. That's the Beaver Club. 200 years later, their descendants having become honorable citizens relive this, this time. Now he ends up <coughs> naming all these people like him. administrator de Bombardier, d'Industrial Insurance et Gouverneuse Générale. Marc Lalonde, ancien ministre des Finances, maintenant au conseil d'administration de la City Bank of Canada. Francis Fox, ministre des Communications, engagé par Astral Communication. Toute la gang des Canadiens français de service est là, costumé en roi nègre biculturel. All the French Canadian kings are there too, costumed as they should be as well. So they, they hang living birds which they shoot and then they serve them. This is, I don't know how to call them in English, they're called faisans. Pheasants, yeah, exactly, of course. May I yes. say to you the <laughs> exactly. Never any club has been so honored and so magnificently rewarded on its 200th anniversary to have such a magnificent membership. Falardo shot this are. in 85, but he didn't release it until 1993. So he, he wrote this whole voiceover a little later, and it's so it's a documentary, essentially. Why am I showing you this? He, he made a bunch of other movies. This movie lasts about 15 minutes. I cut it way shorter. I am showing it to you because I have a kind of weird relationship with this film. You'll understand why in a minute. They are not tall, to to save you. it's just Good that evening. we are on our knees, that's what this sentence says. So you can see the, the link with, um, with uh, the same line there that was in Elvis Graton. So, so this, these images here are of... Uh, of the, a domain uh, owned by the Desmarais family. And these are images that I shot like 15 years ago. I was hired to go film the anniversary of, um, of the, the wife of Monsieur Desmarais, Madame, they call her. And, um, so they took the same, you know, later on, the, um, what they call anonymous. I think it's a movement that exists as well in, um, in the States. You know, they, they wear the masks from the V for Vendetta. So anonymous, they took this film, they managed to, to find like some copy of it, and they, they took the, the voiceover of Le Temps des Buffons and pasted it on here. And then so, these images, it, it, you know, I had a bunch of camera people there to, and I was directing the, the piece. And they built this whole room here to celebrate her birthday, only to celebrate her birthday. And then they put it down the next day and everybody came to this thing. Here you can see the Prime Minister of Quebec. Here the ex-Prime Minister of Canada, Brian Mulroney. So they built this whole place, put it down. The domain is humongous. There's a golf course on there. They, I shot their fe a pheasant uh, hunt. So they bring 30,000 pheasants. They let them loose on the property, and then you just go hunting with them. 
I have a bunch of really strange stories to tell about. I'm actually going to turn down the volume. There's George Bush Sr. So the, behind him was the Prime Minister of, of Quebec at the time, uh, Mr. Charest. Um, so everybody was there. So I'm just going to bring down the volume to concentrate here and tell you about this experience. Um, essentially, there's a tower, uh, there's Larry Rose, there's a tower that's at the far end of this large room and I'm the only one allowed in it and there was no other cameraman allowed in the room because they didn't want to, you know, have camera people around. So we had, I think, 18, this is Jean Chrétien, he was the Prime Minister of Canada for about like 25 years. Um, so everybody's there, everyone who's competing politically against each other, even the cultural like elite are there. Um, kind of, uh, and the way it's presented, it's as if they're sucking up to, uh, to, to, de to the Demarais. And, and the Demarais family, I mean, they own Power Corporation, Power Corp. And uh, they're, they're one of the most, if not the most, um, wealthy family in Canada. And I've done, I've done a bunch of work for them, but this experience was totally surreal because uh, they built this tower at the far end. I'm at the top of the tower. There's a little window uh, that I can look through and I have all my uh, computers and everything. Um, I'm just going to pause this to, to tell you this uh, story properly. So. I'm at the top of the tower, there's all the, there's 18 robot cameras throughout the room um, that are following movements, I can also control them from a distance. I have camera people as well for the entrances and stuff, but once the meal starts, once people start coming in, they didn't want anybody in there. And I just kind of, I'm asking you to picture me up in that tower, looking through a window about yay tall at this room where everybody is and I'm the only one that can see them all I can hear them through microphones that are placed and I'm, I'm recording everything of course I'm hired to be there it was it, it really changed my perspective of the world in in a way um, because for all kinds of reasons. For one thing, because they're all just people. We know that, right? That they're all just people, of course. But all these rivals that are all there, that know each other so well, all sitting around the same tables. And I started thinking of all of, of, all of this as a, a kind of charade, as a play um, of sorts that they play for for the general public, you know, so of course they believe in what uh, we would assume they believe in what they preach. Um, but at the end of the day, they're not really rivals. They're all working for the same thing. They're all working for, for the demarais or for the money, uh, if you will. So is that a way of looking at it only? It's not the total, tr the, the full truth. Yeah, that, that, indeed, it's not the full truth, but it's, a, it's an important perspective to keep in mind um, in, in any country, you know, for us to keep in mind that this is the reality, that all these people, they know each other and they're all kind of acting in a way to, uh, to play the game. Okay, now, next movie is called Yes Sir, Madame. Hi, salut. I'm Earl Tremblay. Je suis Earl Tremblay, puis je suis ici pour parler de moi. And I'm here to talk about myself with the help of, uh, of this film you're about to see. Avec l'aide du film que vous allez voir. J'ai commencé à filmer l'an passé. I started filming last year. J'avais jamais touché une caméra avant ça. I'd never touched a camera before. Je savais pas, moi, que, que faire un film, c'est comme entrer dans, dans, dans son intestin. Making a film, uh, making a film is like going into an intestine, son propre intestin. It's like traveling down your own intestine. Puis se à sa marde. You get into deep shit. J'avais 19 bobines de film en partant. In the beginning, I had 19 rolls of film. The last one is in the camera right now. La 19e euh, est dans la caméra maintenant. La 18e, euh, j'ai assez capoté tout le long de ce film-là que <coughs> je me rappelle pas ce que c'est la 18e. 
pas plus que je me rappelle comment je me suis mégané les mains comme ça. The 18th roll. Well, it's a mystery to me. I don't remember what the hell's on it, just like I don't remember how my hands got so... Uh, I got all the film processed so I could find out what the hell happened to me. That last reel, I don't know, might end up being my epitaph if this all goes wrong. Anyway, si j'en sors pas trop beurre, when things clear, ben c'est bien évident que doing this in French and English, qu'à parler comme ça dans, dans deux langues, it's gonna make a real fucking Canadian movie. Ça va faire un crise de bon film canadien. This is a 1994 film by okay, Robert Morin. Oh, okay, Robert Morin. Yes, sir. So he's not Madame. Earl Tremblay. He's not exactly playing himself here. We'll start with my parents. Mes parents, my parents, Henri Tremblay and Ma Burke, on their honeymoon with another couple, uh, pendant leur lune de miel uh, avec un autre couple. Mm. I'm going to mention again that I cut a lot of this film out, so... Nos parents nous ont embarqué avec eux autres dans leur manie. After my sister and I were born, our parents dragged us along with them on their crazy joy rides. We were brought up in French and English. On a été élevés en anglais et en français. And we got filmed a lot. On a été beaucoup filmés. Every year, we went to the ocean on holidays. Puis on passait toutes nos vacances sur le bord de la mer. <coughs> Un autre cache pour le souper des riches. Dad caught tons of these to keep craft dinner in our fridge. Hein? I say it's hard work. Oui, oui. On arrive, ce sera pas long, là. It's the last portrait I have of Dad. Pick it, pick it, pick it, pick it, pick it, pick it. Ah, ouais, à gauche. No, no, the other left. Pick it, 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 pick it. Mom died of clam poisoning a couple of months later. Ma mère est morte quelque temps plus tard d'un empoisonnement pas lourd. Juste avant de mourir, elle m'a donné sa caméra, puis 19 bobines en me disant que ça allait m'aider à me retrouver. Before she died, she gave me her camera and 19 rolls of film. She said it helped me to find myself. Je comprenais pas à ce moment-là. Me retrouver, je veux dire, je m'étais jamais senti perdu. I couldn't figure out what she meant. I mean, I... I I'd never felt lost or anything. C'est comme ça que je me suis mis à filmer. So that's how I started filming. Ça c'est ma première bobine. And this is the first film I ever shot. Ça la bobine qui m'a fait comprendre qu'un héritage ça donne pas nécessairement un coup de main. And it's about how an inheritance can sometimes be a real pain in the ass. Mon père est parti sans dire un mot. Anyways, Dad took off without saying a word. Il est allé à son bateau. He went to his boat. He wanted to be alone. Il voulait être seul, je pense. Quand je suis parti du cimetière, when I left the cemetery, j'étais complètement mêlé. I was pretty mixed up. Je jouais avec les pitons de la caméra. I started playing with the camera, trying to... <coughs> Looks like this movie wants to start, but doesn't, I mean, didn't know how. C'était comme si le film voulait commencer, mais, mais que je le bloquais dans ma tête. Yeah, everything was stuck all right. Tout était pogné pour vrai, je veux dire, moi, le film, the film, and then, whoosh, puis le char a fini par rester pogné. Then the car got stuck. Puis pas n'importe où. And not just anywhere. Qu'est-ce que j'avais pas besoin de ça? An empty screen and a goddamn camera. Même si la caméra pouvait m'aider à me retrouver. Se retrouver, ça ne fait pas nécessairement une vue. Je veux dire, moi, ma face dans la grande face blême de cet écran-là. Même en plein été, il n'y aurait pas eu un chat dans le drive-in pour voir ça. 
I didn't know what to do. Up till now, my life had been as boring and empty as this big white screen. I could shoot for a million years and still not have five minutes worth watching. Roll number two. Uh, C'est comment j'ai découvert une sorte de pouvoir dans ma caméra. It's about how I discovered there was a kind of power in the camera. And how I realized that my mom was more important to my dad than, uh, than I'd ever be. I stayed up all night, filming whatever I could find. Je suis resté debout toute la nuit à filmer... Euh, à filmer n'importe quoi. Mostly souvenirs from my parents' trips. Principalement des souvenirs des manies de mes parents. And there was a lot of them. Puis en avait pas mal trop. Meanwhile, the storm had gotten a lot worse. Pendant ce temps-là, dehors, la tempête était de plus en plus forte. <coughs> Tic-tac, I felt trapped, taponné, par la tempête puis par les dernières volontés de ma mère. My mother's last wish was starting to seem like a curse, a punishment I could not escape. I m'avais condamné. I'd been given my sentence. I had to do time. 19 bobines de 3 minutes. 19 rolls, 3 minutes each. À cette vitesse-là, ça se pouvait pas. Another 18 rolls would have killed me. Il fallait que ça arrête. I had to figure out how to control the camera. <laughs> Next day, the night me, the storm was still there. The tempête était toujours là, both inside and out, à l'extérieur comme à l'intérieur. Oops! Roll four is how, even if the camera didn't help my social life, it at least got me to move my ass. <coughs> Une chance, en tout cas, euh, qu'il y a eu cette corde à linge-là à un moment donné pour me remettre les yeux en face des trous. Then this clothesline came into sight, and I realized something. C'est à partir d'ici que la caméra a commencé de me faire voir un peu plus loin que, que ce que je voyais à première vue. The camera helped me to see the beauty hidden in simple things. Je veux dire, uh, for instance, uh, these socks weren't just hanging there, drying. They were dancing. Ouais, c'est ça. Les bas, c'est la corde à linge, là. <coughs> Ils ne faisaient pas juste sécher. Ils se sont mis à... à puer des pieds, tabarnak. Maybe Mom was right. If the camera had helped me to find this, maybe it could help me to find myself. All of a sudden, a world of wonders called me from beyond the horizon. Ouais. La caméra avait fini par me montrer la platitude de la place que j'avais toujours habité. À un moment donné, en tout cas, j'ai senti le besoin de crisser mon camp. Je veux dire, ça pouvait pas être pire ailleurs. This film is about essentially a man who ends up getting a split personality between his Canadian identity and his Quebec identity, or his English and his French identity. Being bilingual offered me all kinds of possibilities. Being poor got me a ticket to Montreal. Mais avec le bacon que j'avais, je pouvais pas aller plus loin que Montréal. 150 minus 125. 25 bucks was all I had left when I left. It gets interesting because at the beginning he's only translating from French to English continually. But the further along that we move through the film, which lasts about 15 minutes, he starts to. To, first he's com completing his thoughts, that was the ONF, the NFB building that we just crossed. Um, so he, he's completing his thoughts from one language to the other. At first he's just translating, then he's completing his thoughts, and finally by the end he's saying sometimes the opposite thing. And eventually he's even in conversation between the two, like the French and the English are conversing and arguing amongst themselves. 
The ride ended when I ran out of cash. C'est mon portefeuille qui a décidé où je suis arrêté. But bilingualism bailed me out immediately. C'est le fait d'être bilingue qui me l'a renfloué. It got me my first job. Used car salesman. Ça m'a donné ma première job. Vendeur de chars usagés. My first house came with the deal. What the... Ouais, ça venait avec une maison, ce job-là. J'étais bien équipé à part de ça, regarde ça. Nice painting. Uh, running water. My bed. Puis surtout mon boss. Ferme-la. There's Fern, my boss. Hmm. My bread and butter. Mon manger. All this because I spoke English and you didn't. Tout ça parce que je parle l'anglais, puis lui, euh, qu'est-ce que tu veux? J'arrive pas. Non, je sais pas. Ha, ha, ha. Hmm. Chance que j'avais une bonne, euh, bonne poubelle. Puis un bon voisin pour m'aider, moi, pour ma poubelle. Finger looking good, eh? Lui, puis Fernand, il semblait pas affecté pas en tout par, euh, par toutes ces années de traitement spécial du colonel. Neither him nor Fern seem to be affected by all those years of uh, ha ha, the Colonel's special blend of eleven herbs and spices. <sighs> Fern was hell of a salesman, a real smooth operator. So for so, Fernand of a I guess he wanted me to be one too. Why, I'd have been with you. Pass my clean minute. Yeah, que je sois comme lui. Yo, père. Easy like putting a ring on a finger. Ouais, comme dans filet de bags and saucisses. J'étais pas trop bon dans la vente. I wasn't too good at selling cars. Heureusement que j'avais une autre fonction dans la place. Luckily, I had another job to fall back on. Surveillais Carras la nuit. Night watchman. Ça fait que tous les soirs, je devais attendre que Fern s'en aille pour avoir droit à mon intimité. Every night after Fern left, the place was mine. Why? I was pretty happy there. But for some reason, I felt sort of uneasy, like I was being watched. Ça a pas été long, en tout cas, que la cabane est devenue trop petite. This painting was my good luck charm. It helped me push this creepy feeling away. Ah, la crise de peinture. À un moment donné, j'ai eu peur de figer dedans jusqu'à ma mort. I fought this feeling every night till I fell asleep. Click! Un soir, je me suis dit qu'il fallait que je crisse mon camp. Par contre, le lendemain, je pas capable de crisser mon camp. Je savais pas pourquoi. I sort of felt more and more at home with Fern. Then one day, uh, see, he started treating me like a piece of shit. <laughs> was it the camera that was bugging him or the fact that I hadn't sold a single car yet? Ça n'a pas d'importance. Anyways, the colonel's men were getting pretty stingy. What? Le colonel coûtait moins cher que, que le docteur. And Fern was so fed up with me that he finally traded me for a, for a Fred. C'est ça, puis il a fini par me changer pour un chien. Hein, Fred? Hein? Il n'avait pas besoin plus que d'un Fred pour surveiller ses minutes. He didn't need more than a dog to watch his goddamn cars anyways. C'est vrai que Fred avait le poil pas mal plus doux que le mien. And Fred was more affectionate than I was. So I hit the road. Ça fait qu'on s'est laissé bons amis. And Fred, well, he had taken my job and he would probably take over their business someday. <laughs> so we were listening. That dog fucked up everything for me. Fred avait rien à voir là-dedans, c'est à moi. There's long pauses of black. Santé. I've cut all of them way shorter. Up yours. You hear them uh, lighting a cigarette. Uh, Roll each number time six. He, 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 has, he opens another beer, so he gets more and more drunk uh, as the film how, continues. How I almost became something other than human. Come on, <coughs> come on. Come on, ça fait du bien de changer de peau des fois. So here in French, he says how it feels good to change Fern skin sometimes. So you see how it's starting to Actually, change like from an actual translation. <laughs> Shut up, you mangy mutt. Anyway, un mot du bon char. That came with problems. Qui venait avec un pays, un toit ouvrant, un volant, power steering. Came with problems, came with a country. Uh, and then he says it came with a country. <laughs> was far from what I expected or from life. J'ai vécu dans ce char-là pendant une couple de mois. 
I lived in it for a couple of months while I was looking for another job. I was stationed in a little coin de banlieue tranquille le soir pour dormir. Camping in the suburbs made me feel like a real loser. I'd never have a house as nice as these ones. Toutes les images que j'ai faites de nos emplacements de camping durant ce temps-là renforçaient en moi l'idée qu'il n'y avait pas plus grande mort que de s'installer sur le bord de la route dans une petite cabane pareille à celle des autres. J'étais bien dans mon char. Le bungalow puis la job en moins, je faisais la même vie que tout le monde. Anyways, I was getting sick of living in the car. But once you get sucked into the car world, it's hard to get out of it. You start sleeping in it, eating in it, and pretty soon you end up going out with it. C'est ça je veux dire, c'est bien correct. No, that's not what I meant. Would you end up getting dragged along with it to these crazy fucking car dramas? That I have nothing to do with human dramas. Les drames de char, les drames humains, les chars, ils c'est pas ça les autres pantoutes. My car might have got a kick out of this, but I wasn't. Jesus Christ. Luckily, my beater broke down before I became a car myself. Je vois pas ce qu'il y a de mal à être un char. Ils n'ont pas mal plus de place que nous autres dans la vie. Rôle number seven. It's about how I almost disappeared. It's also about how my mother's wish began to take shape. Quand ma minute a pété, je me suis ramassé dans un coin de la ville qui n'avait pas l'air d'intéresser personne. After my car broke down, I ended up in a weird part of town. Actually, it was the only place I could afford at that time. C'était tranquille, puis c'était pas la place qui manquait. For one thing, it was as quiet as a tomb. En tout cas, ça a pas été long que j'ai équipé mon foyer. Une belle table. Une chaise. The place didn't look much better after I'd moved the furniture in. Un bon sommier. I mean, how can you get a good night's sleep? Un bon matelas on a pile of junk. Pour la première fois de ma vie, j'étais en vacances. I had really hit bottom. I didn't know how to get out of this mess. Begging for change, I mean, I was really down. Le lundi, je m'en dis. Le mardi, je m'en dis, for Christ's sake. Le mercredi, le jeudi, le vendredi, le samedi. I was sure I'd be stuck there for the rest of my life. Mais quand c'est que c'est dimanche, je paye un croissant au chien. Le chien, lui, s'en fout. Ça ou du pain. Sometimes I felt like eating the fucking dog. Mais le bourgeois qui passe sur le trottoir d'en face, ça le fout en pétard, c'est rigolard. Et moi, je ris jusqu'au lundi. Week after week, this went on a fucking vicious circle. Et le lundi, je m'en dis. <rire> anyway, it was no picnic. Quoi? Moi, je n'ai pas ça pantoute. À tous les jours, je me rends dans mon club social avec mes chums. Some fucking social club. Every goddamn day, I had to stand in line with a bunch of stinking bums for something to eat. Don't push in all that shit. I mean, how cynical serving these poor illiterate bastards alphabet soup every day. J that, that's all, folks. Hmm. Roll number eight. This one's about how I felt something I'd never felt before. <coughs> something that made my idea of myself everything but simple. Ouais, c'est ça. La première chose importante que la caméra m'a fait découvrir en moi, c'est arrivé un soir après la soupe. The first really important thing that the camera made me find out about myself happened one night after the educational soup. J'étais retourné à ma villa. I was back at the slum. Ça a commencé comme ça. It started like... Je vais voir ce qui se passe. I had to see what was going on. La place au grand complet passe au feu. The entire place was finally going up in smoke. <coughs> Un vrai cauchemar. Nightmare, fuck off. It was a dream come true. <coughs> ok, 
shit is Gestapo bull. <laughs> Drunks pouring out of their nests like so many cockroaches. I finally had the kick in the ass I needed to get back on track. See now the the, the really he's answering himself. He's arg he's starting to argue between the English and the French. And I was crying. Then I realized what was happening to me. C'est là que je me suis rendu compte de ce qui m'arrivait. J'étais deux. I was two. Je veux dire, I mean, in the same body, two puis dans la même personne. I froze in the middle of this. Je suis resté figé au bout milieu de ça. Hoping the fire would burn down the wall I had built in myself. Pour laisser le mur que j'avais en moi brûler le reste de la nuit. Le lendemain, il restait plus rien. The next day, there was nothing left. So flamur. How much of this was autobiographical? I, I would imagine that most of it was staged, but a lot of these images, I mean, he had to... You know, like Roll images of his nine. parents and things like number this. I think nine. he might have shot, Bobin like, you some of his own Bobin, childhood for that. Bobin la Whereas, this real is um, about compromises. like a scene like he this one with the things. fire, he obviously didn't stage that fire. So he, he must have been lucky to grab some, some images that he didn't include in the script. I found us a new job to avoid the fights. C'est ça. We were announcer, party, DJ, bouncer, puis bilingue, pas bas sur le marché, in a small club. Ça, c'est à notre poste de commande. From here, we lit the fuse to the entire place. C'est à partir d'ici que... qu'on faisait partir toute l'affaire. Juste du bout du doigt. Et maintenant, messieurs, and now, gentlemen, the voluptuous, la pneumatique, Manon, oh non, oh non, non, non. Les femmes. Women. Huh? 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 Staying alive. Staying alive. Why? Là, ça aurait pu se passer mal entre moi et moi-même. Yeah, there could have been a source of problems between myself and I, but... Uh, mais... Uh, <coughs> but, uh, mais non, non, non. Rule number ten. This one is about how one compromise automatically leads to another. And that if it wasn't for the little surprises that life puts on our path, things would, things would never change. Once again, bilingualism got us back on track. We got a new job at the racetrack. On a commencé à travailler à l'hippodrome. And it's Snow White in the first, Snow White en première, followed by Tinkerbell, suivi de Tinkerbell en deuxième, in third place Cinderella, Cinderella troisième. I sort of liked the job itself. La job comme telle était pas mal plate. But then I discovered the gambler in my other me. The, the French one says he doesn't like the job and the, the English one says he likes it. Il se passe pas en tout gage, un peu de bacon, c'est piquant entre les courses. So every time a race was over, he couldn't stop himself from putting a bit of money on the horses. Sometimes and now he's talking about the French one as he. On commence à gagner assez souvent quand that's bullshit, we barely broke even. Quand j'ai rencontré JP Lévesque, alias Le Plain, le roi du béton à Montréal. All the gambling got us hooked up with JP Lévesque. Montreal's king of concrete. He was with his femme and his guard du corps. He was with his horse Cracker Jack and his jockey. Son cheval Cracker Jack and his jockey. Sa limousine and son chauffeur. His limousine and his driver. He was bien entouré. I mean, this guy was well equipped. Ah ouais, come on, viens en bas. He made it clear he wanted me to be part of the team. Je veux dire, tu dis pas non à un gambler quand il t'offre de jouer. Ah ouais, come on, viens en bas. So I got in. Fait que, ça fait que je suis embarqué, question de, question de voir son jeu. Carbono to Brisebois, around the net! Ah, le merveilleux monde des pleins. Uh -huh. So JP made his power play. Fait que JP nous a fait un offre. He wanted me to be his, uh, his personal home movie maker. Il voulait que je sois son cinéaste de famille personnelle. <rire> je je m'attendais à tout sauf à ça, mais j'ai fini par accepter en me disant que... Que ça sera encore moins fatigant que de dépenser ma salive ces jours. I was expecting everything but that. I took a shot at it, hoping that uh, it would eventually lead to something better than playing the horses. JP had arrived in the nick of time to save me from having it out with my other half. 
Yes, sir. Madame. Bobbin owns Roll 11. It's about how it's easy to play the game when everybody's playing it. Anyways, this is a role about connections. About how connections... About how one connection leads to another... Whether you like it or not... Will you shut the fuck up? Dying? <laughs> no, it's about... Uh, it's a propos de la mort, la pourriture, Chris. Okay, it's about death. It was federal election time, and as always, I was following JP and his new, uh, his new quoi, helper, <coughs> friend. We had to get involved somehow. Ouais, c'est ça. C'était l'époque des élections fédérales, puis c'est comme ça qu'on s'est retrouvé toute la gang dans le monde opaque de la politique. Of course, and more than anything else, politics increased the gap between us. C'est sûr que plus que n'importe quoi, la politique nous a pas aidé à nous rapprocher. I mean, I've never been interested in politics, but I was pretty impressed by the teamwork of Big Blue Machine. Meanwhile, my other me... <laughs> ouais, c'est sûr que le travail d'équipe qui se faisait là était, était assez considérable. Oops! <laughs> Anyways, by the time Raj showed up at the rally, my double me had become so completely cynical These are, are towards federal politics elections that he started uh, bitching and, uh, about um, all concerns. Mulroney Even me. Is well, the prime minister? We saw him ah, actually in the temps des poufons in front of the map. Well, the temps des poufons, the 2.0, the, the one I shot. Même sa petite fille a passé. On parle de quelqu'un de sans scrupule, là. Le premier qui vote pour moi est à lui. Jesus Christ. Meanwhile, outside, everybody had gathered to uh, clap, clap, clap. I said everybody had gathered to greet the chief of the party. Brillant, brillant le menton, brillant le menton, le ma clic. When the bus finally showed up, for a second, there was no more contact between myself and me. Hey, clap, clap, clap. He was completely out of control. Hey, 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 get my pocket, get my pocket. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. On veut un job, on veut pas travailler! Tu vas l'avoir ta job. When Rod wasn't around anymore, we came back together. À un moment donné, en tout cas, je trouvais ça bizarre de pas voir ce bon vieux Rod-là dans les parages. So we went looking for him. Fait que, fait qu'on est parti à sa recherche. His granddaughter was at the top of the stairs. On a commencé par voir sa petite fille pleurer en haut des marches. Then a little lower his supporters. Puis ses supporters qui marchent plus bas. And a few steps lower, Puis finalement, the man himself. Doom, 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 bad luck. Puis comme de ma chance pour un politicien, juste avant les élections. Then Bernie turned around and made me an offer I couldn't refuse. C'est là que Bernie s'est retourné puis qu'il m'a fait un offre que, que j'aurais dû refuser. Jesus Christ. The French one says I should have refused the film. offer. The other one, the fr Row English one says 13. I couldn't refuse it. It's about how, when opportunity knocks, being the right person is as important as being at the right place at the right time. On s'est retrouvé en tout cas en politique dans le temps de le dire dans un quartier que je connaissais pas avec un mot d'ordre que je comprenais pas, puis une belle paire de petites lunettes sur le bout du nez. Si c'est pas de la réincarnation, ça, je sais pas c'est quoi. So I ended up in Rod's writing, and well, uh, it sure needed help. All this because I was bilingual, but above all. Because I had the blessing of the big blue machine. Levin, my opponent, he never had a chance. J'aurais jamais accepté de faire partie de cette mascarade-là s'il n'y avait pas eu, mettons, des, des accotés confortables en politique. Always harping about politics, my double me sure shut up in a hurry when he got a look at the suite they'd rented us, with a view on our writing. Taking advantage of a situation is one thing, but being a hypocrite, well... Va donc chier, c'est-tu. Ouais, c'était beau, c'est notre comté. Pendant un mois, ma dure moitié m'a fait sourire, serrer des mains puis écouter des plaintes. Tout ça pour me rendre compte en rentrant chez moi tous les soirs que les gens me détestaient de plus en plus. <rire> Politics may give you power, but elections are always a good lesson in humility. Ouais, je me posais plus de questions à savoir pourquoi que les politiciens donnent souvent l'impression de se venger de leurs concitoyens une fois qu'ils sont élus. <rire> en tout cas, le grand patron y avait compris. Il laissait pas traîner sa bouille un peu partout dans les rues. As election day got nearer, Bernie and I spent most of our time working out my speeches. 
Plus le jour des élections approchait, plus Bernie devait se demander s'il n'avait pas fait une erreur en, en proposant une caméra comme candidat. Mais... Mais il était trop tard pour revenir sur sa décision. Fait qu'il passait son temps à m'écrire des beaux discours pour que je pas l'air trop nice. He said that he must have regretted getting a, asking a camera to run Roll for office. Roll 14 is about breaking up. Election day finally came. JP's bouncer even took off his sunglasses for the event and joined my supporters who came to our place to watch the results on TV. Quand le jour des élections est arrivé, tous ceux qui avaient beaucoup à gagner à me voir rentrer se sont ramassés devant notre TV. The machine had worked perfectly. Everybody was confident, but there was still a bit of tension in the air. Tout le monde était nerveux. Tout le monde, euh, sauf JP, qui, euh, qui devait aussi contribuer à la caisse électorale de mon adversaire. The results finally came. I had won. Comme prévu, puis malgré moi, j'avais gagné. All right! On les a fourrés comme il faut! Yeah, we won! Yeah, yeah! JP got a few shots of me. JP a pas pu s'empêcher de pogner la caméra puis euh, de faire quelques images de moi. Yeah. Boy, was he glad. Bernie pleurait quasiment. The party got started. There was champagne for everyone, even for the neckties. <coughs> the party a duré un bon bout de temps. <coughs> This went on all night. Pour certains, un peu trop longtemps. Calique que je trouvais le monde de la politique impitoyable des fois. A bit too long, maybe. <laughs> But the boss didn't seem to mind. When everybody left, I stayed up for a while and kept partying live with the Prime Minister and his family. C'est à ton tour, mon cher menton. Il a fallu que tout le monde s'en aille pour pouvoir écouter une émission un peu plus représentative du monde de la politique. So we had to wait for people to leave for us to look uh, at uh, a show that was a little more representative of Canadian politics, sort of people getting fucked. The next morning I woke up ready to face my responsibilities. Je suis allé dans la salle de bain, but instead I faced us, and there was a lot of them. On s'est fait peur pour vrai. We were all there, on était tous là, all the peace supers on one side, puis toutes les têtes carrées de l'autre bord. The fight would have been a massacre. La bataille aurait pu être mortelle pour tout le monde. The only reasonable solution was to split. Fait qu'on a décidé de se séparer. For good. Pour de bon. Yes, sir. Oui, madame. Bonne chance. Good luck. Chacun sa vie, chacun sa bobine. Um, so, roll 15 is, uh, is the first roll I did after our split. It's about uh, my new job and... Uh, And ghosts, I guess. So when I left for Ottawa, uh, I was really glad to be doing something at last. I, uh, I, uh, hey, please, will you shut the fuck up? I, um, uh, and there it stood, the federal erection. I mean, uh, shit. It's happening again. Dunk. Ding dong. Looking good. I had to brace myself. I don't remember what day it was the first time I went in my office, but uh, judging by this, it must have been around coffee break. The first ghost got in through the air conditioning, and it followed me to my office. There's my office. The two-dollar bitch is watching you. That's what happened. The ghost got me started saying things I didn't want to say. <coughs> Bonjour, Monsieur Tremblay. Uh, oui, uh, yeah, what do you want? I immediately spoke English to him. My secretary never tried French on me again after that. He slammed down a bunch of files. It scared off the ghost for a while, anyways. <laughs> a month later, I had my own house. I know I should have been happy there, but the place was spooky. And it had nothing to do with the furniture. Something was wrong. I thought I came to Ottawa for a reason, but I kept forgetting what it was. Ooh. The ghost was there all the time. 
behind me, everywhere, even inside me, making me say and do all kinds of things I didn't want to. I assume Mr. you know Speaker, that uh, Ottawa is the capital longer. of Canada, uh, where if you win elections, federal elections, that's where you go work. Myself, when in fact I'm not, when in fact I'm an imposter, somebody really screwed up deep inside. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, uh, I'm not the politician you think I am. Today, I have to show you the monster. The boss was embarrassed. Mr. Speaker, the description of himself, the deputy of Côte Saint Paul has just made in front Jean of Chrétien, the Jean Chrétien, he wasn't Assembly, prime minister at that point, but we saw him as well party, at the Demare Mansion. Them, from the prime minister to Mr. Tremblay, and I don't see the purpose of stating what everybody knows when there are so many important matters to be discussed here at the moment in this chamber. What a blow. After that, the party suggested I take a break. So I tried to entertain myself. And in Ottawa, it means museums. <coughs> and man, these places aren't ghost free. Gradually, the ghost succeeded in cutting off all relationships I had with the outside world. I was left with phony plastic people all around me. Ah, fuck, the motherfucker has just cut the hand of his wife. <coughs> Call 911. Tell the Eskimo to take this goddamn asshole to the North Pole to fuck Baby Seal, fuck Santa Claus, fuck Mrs. Claus, to fuck uh, Rudolph, to shit. C'est ma première bobine solo. C'est ma dernière aussi. C'est à propos de... Dans ce que je me souviens, en tout cas, c'est à propos de la, para... de la... De la paralysie. C'est à propos d'avoir tout. D'avoir tout, en fait, puis de... de pas être capable d'en profiter. They say it's about paralysis, but it's about having everything and not being able to appreciate it. La première chose que j'ai fait quand j'ai réussi à m'évader du parlement, ça a été de me rendre une place où il engage du monde la journée. J'avais besoin de voir du vrai monde, <coughs> du monde qui ont rien devant eux autres puis qui travaillent quand ils en ont besoin. Hmm. Assis-toi pas attends. Mais, mais la place euh, ressemble pas mal trop au parlement avec un boss derrière une vitre. Looks like the parliament. Tu dis qu'ils pognent le bain en attendant de se faire dire quoi faire. Fait que Fait que, je, fait que je suis pas resté longtemps. J'ai crissé mon camp. Je me suis rendu une place où j'étais certain de trouver ce que je cherchais. Je veux dire, un euh, Ottawa qui a, qui a, qui a l'air de d'autres choses que ce que Tipetit me faisait vivre à longueur de journée. Mais non, Chris, en rentrant dans la place, euh, je me suis retrouvé direct au Parlement. Avec un gros Again, as soon as I arrived, I was just, I was back at the parliament with a bunch of ministers, finance, justice, uh, exterior affairs, everyone wanting to make the boss happy. At some point, an Indian got up, he was pissed off, started barking. Started barking at the government. The boss didn't mind. He just looked at his justice uh, department and they understood each other without saying anything. Then it all got settled between justice and finance on the, the pool table. Doesn't matter who won. It's just that what mattered is that the Indian took his hole and that the boss was happy. Je pouvais pas en sortir. Je me retrouvais tout le temps dans la même game stérile. Après ça, après ça, je me rappelle plus bien bien. Je me rappelle que pour sortir de ça, j'ai eu envie de me mettre, puis que le gros m'avait donné l'adresse du ministre de la Condition féminine. Euh, je me rappelle, je me rappelle de ce corridor là. Euh, ça. C'est quoi ça? C'est quoi ça? Regarde, je me rappelle pas ce point. Il ne se souvient pas de tout ça. Oh. 
Holy shit. What the fuck? Quoi What the fuck? That, that is actually Robert Morin's wife damn, at the time. Bitch. No wonder I can't remember and a that, fucking thing. And that baby is probably genre, his daughter, so, so Alex. It's also the name, the name of my uh, daughter. We could have been killed, and you don't give a, a flying fuck, do you? It's because of you that we're in this fucking mess. Don't touch me, I'm warning you. Don't touch me! Oh shit! Christ on the crutch! I'll kill you. You miserable motherfucking pea soup. Hey, laisse ça là, ok? Laisse ça là, tabarnak. Touche pas à ça! Oh yeah? Well, you should get a taste of your own medicine, you fucking ass licker. Qu'est-ce que c'est? Non, 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 non. Qu'est-ce que c'est là? Hey, 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 hey! Tzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzz
pass up the frog kashkan hemat ko is lots of them eh Funny, they, they don't talk and they seem to, to understand. It's worth mentioning that the Desmarais family, Paul Desmarais, uh, that we saw in, in the film, um, whose wife we were celebrating, and he started from nothing. He, he was, uh, well, I don't want to say poor, but he, he was definitely not rich when he was young, and, and he built in his lifetime one of the Hello. greatest fortunes we've That's ever seen in this country. Uh, you speak English? Hello, sir. Um, no, no, don't go away. We, no. The dad, the dad, that's all, folks. Tan, 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 tan. If this film is ever shown on TV, si ce film là est jamais présenté à TV, it's going to be very late at night. Ça va être pas mal tard la soir. So I might as well do the job all the way. Ça fait que je suis bien allé jusqu'au bout. <coughs> oh, Canada. You see how Pierre Falardeau was actually mentioned in the credits there, almost as an inspiration, Claude Jutra. So they're naming a bunch of filmmakers that have, I guess, influenced him. And uh, when I say they, I mean both personalities, of course, which are, for the first time, both singing at the same time as they sing our national anthem. And uh, Brian Mulroney there. And um, Alex Roderer. So that, that was uh, his, uh, his daughter, I guess. Yeah, at the, at the end of the... I think it's similar in the States at the time, but in Canada, at the end of the programming on TV stations, we, we used to play the national anthem. That's why he's, he's playing it, he's singing it now at the end of the film. I've never really been personally very, you know, critical of the elite class. Always been very, I don't know, I guess I, I like to connect with all people of all classes. And I like to think of everybody just as human beings with different circumstances. And we all have needs and wants and uh, desires and aspirations that are uh, unique uh, to our own personalities. but. Um, but yeah, it's, and it's that, that point of view has allowed me to meet all kinds of people. Um, just like I met, uh, you know, just like I found myself in that situation at the Desmarais uh, domain there uh, in Sagar. Now, what I'm showing you now is uh, the movie we're going to be watching until the end of class, which is called J'adore Nicole, You're Sleeping Nicole. So it's going to be a lot more... Um, easy going we'll say it's uh it's it's not so much a political or social commentary that we're going to be getting from this film from stefan lafleur it's um but at the same time without being set in montreal it feels it's it's rather recent it's about four years old the film it feels very quebec i when i look at this film i go wow he really captured um our reality 
And I thought that the film would be a great fit for you um, because of the age of the characters. Um, they're, they're all a, a little younger than you, but I think they're living, they're going through something similar to you, um, even with the pandemic and so on. Now, this music is by Organ Mood. It's the music I used in the, um, in the previous class. With Alexandre Domingue, I used three different tracks by Organ Mood, and I've been using Christophe Lamar's music um, f ever since I met him when I interviewed him for this film. And Organ Mood has performed at Nomad as well. And uh, it's really amazing what they do. I love the music, and, and Stéphane Lafleur really s sought him out. Uh, he liked the mood <laughs> of his music and sought him out for this film. It's the first uh, and only soundtrack that, uh, that Organ Mood did, I believe. Salut, pas. Bon, tu m'entends, là? Ben, ouais. Ah, c'est beau. Ça marche, ça. Bon, ça va? Oh, oui, vous autres? Ah, ça va, ça va. Si pas arrêter de mouiller. C'est pas des maudites farces. On... Il a pas eu une belle journée depuis qu'on est arrivé. Non, c'est plat, ça. Ouais. Mais ben, ils sont crêpes, oh, là. Non, euh, ils ont-tu appelé pour les valises de ta mère? Euh, non. Ah, elle dit qu'ils ont pas appelé. Veux-tu bien dire où ça s'est ramassé, ça? Je ne sais pas, pas peut-être que c'est quand... Ouais, puis sinon, euh, tu es correct à la maison? Ben oui, tout est sous contrôle. Hein? Ouais. Euh, ta mère t'a demandé si t'as arrosé le jardin. Euh, oui, oui. Ouais, puis pour la piscine, tu te souviens, là? Tu mets une pastille de clore après... This film is, is oui, oui, shot oui, by bon. Sarah Michara. That's the, the cinematographer on the film. And, and Sarah Michara, I mean, you're going to love her aesthetic. It's one of the reasons I just love this film is, is the, it's just amazing cinematography. And uh, she's the cinematographer on Felix et Mayra, which we're going to be watching in a couple of weeks as well, hopefully uh, accompanied by the director of the film. Uh, the Sa My Salinger Year, which is a film coming out this year by another Falardo, a different Falardo called Philippe Falardo. My Salinger Year is an American film by a Quebec director. So here Nicole gets her credit card. 
So yeah, Sarah Michar is a, a, a really great cinematographer and uh, her work is, a, you, you've seen a lot of her work even in just a reel that we watched from uh, Alexandre Domingue last week from uh, Postmodern, Modern. <laughs> this film was made in 2014, I said it was four years old earlier, it's a little more than that, already six years old, by Stéphane Lafleur. I believe it's his third film, and the two other films he made were also uh, shot by uh, Sarah Michara. chaud de te faire aller le fourneau. Ouais, je sais. Mais j'avais comme vraiment le goût de ça. Mais là, je pense que je me suis trompée dans mes quantités. Puis on dirait que je finirai jamais. Je pensais que tu travaillais. Non, oh, j'ai quand les malades. J'étais trop magané le matin. Mm -hmm. Ok, ok, je le sais qu'il faut que je m'en aide de là. Pas de ma faute si Monsieur Belinsky m'aime trop. Regarde ce qu'il m'a envoyé tantôt. Lis la carte. Repose-toi bien, Véronique, et reviens-nous en forme grande. <rire> ça, je te dis. Là, il veut que je sois gérante. Hein? De qui? T'es la seule employée. Je sais bien, c'est ça que j'ai dit. Petit chat. Ben, en attendant, j'ai trouvé ça. Je vais te l'arranger et décousu sur le côté. Elle est belle. Merci. Ça fait plaisir. Puis toi? Quoi? Mais comment ça s'est fini, hein? Oh. Ben, correct. 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 Tu sais, à un moment donné, je t'en poserai plus des questions sur tes affaires. C'est ça qui va arriver. Fac. Il m'a demandé si on allait s'en voir. Oh. Oh, je peux pas savoir, là. Oh, come on! Hey, on C'était tellement évident, il t'a pas lâché de la soirée. OK, c'est beau. Ça m'intéresse pas. On a grosse paix. Stéphane Lafleur est aussi um, un éditeur. Like il a édité des films qui. Well, dans un film, Monsieur Lazare, par exemple, uh, by Falardo, not by Philippe Falardo, que j'ai juste mentionné, qui a fait My Salinger Year. Um, yeah, so he, he's also won awards as an editor. So he's well rounded. He's also a musician. I've never heard his music, but. Yeah, he's a well rounded artist. C'est quoi l'affaire? Tu peux pas aller ailleurs? Bon, il y a de toi. Non, te dérangera pas, là. Tu te rendras même pas compte qu'on est là. Pas, il a dit pas de fumage dans la maison, personne dans leur chambre. Ouais, c'est clair. Vous avez des biscuits? Ben, moi, j'en prendrai un. 
petit nouveau, il en veut-tu, lui? JF, salut. Salut. I don't know if you remember as well at Post Modern when we were walking up the stairs, I stopped at some point on the poster for Tudor Nicole um, and, uh, and mentioned the music to, uh, to Alexandre. So it's all coming together and it's all connected. That's what I, we were talking about last week, especially how it's such a village here in Montreal that the filmmaking community, which I'm not really a part of, you know, I'm, I'm so much on the independent side. I'm kind of off the track in that way, making my own kind of stuff. Um, but, uh, but even someone like myself is actually rather well connected with um, that filmmaking community. So imagine uh, Falardo, who edits, um, who, who uses Stéphane Lafleur as an editor, huh? who, um, who they use the same cinematographer, and on and on and on. It, it, it really goes far. Il y a de l'air meilleur que l'autre. Quoi ça? Le petit nouveau. Il semble qu'il est meilleur que l'autre dormeur d'avant. Je sais pas. Mon frère va l'avoir à l'usure de toute façon. C'est le deuxième qui passe en un an. Même sa spécialité de mettre le monde à bout. Je te gage cinq pièces qui passera pas à semaine. Pour une fois que j'avais la maison à moi. Là. Presque. Je te laisse. Ça fait combien? Je sais pas trop. Mets-moi vite. C'est six le maximum. Ben, mets-moi six d'abord. Ça fait 52, puis toi, 71. Il me semble que c'était plus le fun avant. Oh non, pas Martin. Qu'est-ce qu'il y a? Je sais pas. Depuis que ça va au mieux prématurément, il pense qu'il y a des chances. Avec toi. Salut, Véronique. Salut, Nicole. Salut, Salut Martin. Martin. Qu'est-ce que vous faites? On s'entraîne pour les Olympiques. T'as l'air fatigué, Nicole? Mmh. C'est normal. C'est parce que tu dépenses pas assez d'énergie durant la journée. Tu devrais faire du sport, du jogging. Ça aide à dormir. Ça vous tente-tu qu'on en joue un? Demande à Véro, moi, euh, je suis pas assez bonne. Je pourrais te donner des trucs. Ça va être beau. Nicole, ma mère m'a dit que tu voulais plus venir me garder. Pour vrai, j'ai un peu passé l'âge, Martin. C'est-tu parce qu'elle te payait pas bien, parce que moi, je peux lui en parler? Non, c'est pas ça. On s'entendait bien, pourtant. On a plein d'affinités. Tu perds ton temps, Martin. Tu le sais que je suis trop vieille pour toi. Le cœur a pas d'âge, Nicole. Dans dix ans, ça fera pas de différence. Mais on s'en reparlera dans dix ans, d'abord. Tu sais que ma voix, c'est juste la première étape d'une longue transformation. Plusieurs autres grands changements s'en viennent. Je suis contente pour toi, Martin. Tu pourras pas refuser l'amour toute ta vie, Nicole. C'est ce qu'il y a de plus beau, l'amour. Peut-être une autre fois? Bon, ben, profitez bien de la belle journée. La vie, ça passe vite. Ils sont beaux, tes cheveux, comme ça, Véronique. Bye, Martin. C'est quand même charmant. <rire> <rire>
<rire> On pourrait aller au ciné -park. Ouais. Quoi? Ben... C'est juste que Bibi est au garage. Encore? Ouais, je sais. Elle avait dit de pas donner le nom à ton char. Ça te rend émotive. Qu'est-ce que tu veux que je fasse? Il faut que je la laisse aller de même. C'est la dernière fois, je promis. Ça va ou non? Ben, je sais pas, je te suis. Ben, moi aussi, je te suis depuis tantôt. Est-ce que vraiment ça, notre été? Deux molles chocolat vanille, s'il te plaît. Elle est vraiment nice. Faut que je t'appelle madame maintenant, madame Nicole? En tout cas, merci, madame. De rien. C'est gratuit. Quoi? Pour vrai, on peut faire ce qu'on veut. On peut aller n'importe où. Hmm. Riksuga. Ouais. Riksuga. Riksuga. Je sais pas. Il me semble que ça sonne comme rien. Ça sonne tout comme rien. Riksuga, ça veut dire balayeuse. On a de la misère à se ramasser ici. On va pas aller en Islande pour passer la, la Riksuga. On va être concentré sur les affaires utiles. De marche, c'est réglé. Tu l'avais dit? That actor there is called Marc André Grondin. He's one of our most famous, I guess, uh, actors. He was the main actor in a movie called Crazy C.R.A.Z.Y. 
And he was in Goon as well, which is a movie you might have seen as it was directed by Jay Baruchel, fellow Montrealer of uh, This Is The End uh, fame, as well as uh, the, the, the dragon movie there, How to, ra how to Train a Dragon. Tu peux comprendre. Pourquoi je pourrais pas comprendre? Juste que je sais bien que Pat va lâcher le ban quand il y va accoucher. Il aurait plus le temps avec sa job, putain. Je comprends. Je suis pas conne, tu sais. It may seem like nothing, but that's really good editing in my book. Why do I say that? As she looks off into the distance, we cut the black. We're only left with sound. This film has won some prizes for best sound design as well. So we cut to black, we keep the sound going, and then we return to, um, to Nicole who hears a sound behind her, she looks behind her. So that, that whole black section allows us to think. She, that we don't cut to anything, we're just listening. Maybe more time has passed, you know, that black could serve as a passing of, of time. But, um, so we don't know, you know, maybe like uh, 20 minutes passed, 10 minutes passed. Probably no, no more time has passed than that black section itself, but our mind wanders, much like Nicole's mind wanders. So then she turns around, sees the interaction in the background, looks forward again. And now there's just a little, like most of the screen is black except for a little bit of it and then her brother comes out of the darkness. So, you know, I, the cinematography is not particularly spectacular in that scene. It's, it serves its purpose. But the editing and the sound design, but I think particularly the editing, is what tells the story and does it so well. Now, I don't know if you're starting to relate to this film the way I thought you might. With the pandemic and everything and everyone being a little isolated, I imagine that, probably less so these days with, with school and everything, but there's probably uh, some level of boredom that's uh, caught up to you, understandably so. And that's what really Tsudar uh, Nicole, Your Sleeping Nicole, is all about. It's, it's, about uh, it's about boredom and how you fill it. Stuck. But. And the, the, the beauty of Shemba. it, you know, it's showing us things that are, as, when we're young, we, uh, we don't appreciate these things. We don't appreciate the kind of landscape that surrounds us. You know, th this sort of thing, like such a, a room like this one, so badly decorated, so kitsch. You know, we're almost seeing like the Elvis Gaton kind of universe here. And, uh, and thanks to Sarah Michara's uh, great uh, cinematography, 
From our perspective, we're able to see these scenes, anyway I do, look at them with real beauty and appreciation, you know, and uh, yeah, so it's showing us a beauty where we might not uh, find it if we were Nicole. Tu tombes bien bonne, Nicole. Bientôt, tu auras plus besoin de moi pour t'aider. Mais bientôt, je vais partir. Je te l'ai dit, Norma. Hey, Qu'est-ce que tu en penses de celui-là, Norma? Pour aller marcher ces volcans, il a l'air chaud. Il est beau. Il est beau, hein? Moi aussi, je pense. Hey, t'as-tu remarqué qu'on est tout le temps d'accord, toi et moi, Norma? Oui. Ça ferme. J'ai presque fini, là. Véronique, c'est là qui est vide. Vous venez de me le donner pour que je le photocopie. Oh? Oui? Euh, Peux-tu t'occuper euh, de ça aussi? C'est assez urgent. Euh, ouais. Euh, c'est juste que. Faudrait que je parte un petit peu plus tôt aujourd'hui. Oh. C'est pas grave, Véronique. Je vais attendre. mal de partir. Moi, j'ai peur que tu oublies de rentrer chez eux ou quelque chose comme ça. Je sais pas pourquoi, mais je le trouve beau, ce monsieur-là. Tu coucherais ça avec? Moi, ouais. Peut-être. Deux fois. Après, j'aurais peur qu'on s'attache. <rire> tu as-tu dit qu'on partait? C'était pas une bonne journée pour ça. Voyons. Oups. Hein? On ne toi pas, Martin, à cette heure.
Plus fort. Raconte ce qui s'est passé. OK, Véro, c'est correct. Quoi? C'est parce que notre après-balle de secondaire est tombée dans le coma parce qu'elle avait trop bu. Mais non, c'est pas ça qui est arrivé. Hein? Parce que son chum l'avait sacré. Ton chum t'a laissé à ton bar? Non, l'après-balle. Oui, on dort. Ouais, le beau Tommy. Attention! Ça se passe bien, vos affaires? 
pas que tu demandes. C'est toujours de même, ton frère. Je te dirais que c'est pas mal de famille. Tu fais combien d'années de différence? 10 ans. Je suis l'accident. C'est pour ça qu'il te garde dans le sol. Je te trouve pas dans une super bonne position pour me niaiser. Tant que vous vous connaissez? Ouais. Il est comme un vieux couple. Tu peux le dire que t'as trouvé ton goût. Hein? Non. T'as trouvé pas belle? Oui, non, non. C'est juste que. Tu es en train de me donner du oui, oui, non, non? Je suis sûr serait le monde. Ça hein? pas. Tiens. Ils sont vraiment bien faits. Je sais. Ils sont parfaits. So why do you think she's getting interested in this guy? I would, I would argue that it's because he's the only one there, other than Martin, of course, and that she's just bored. She has nothing better to do than to start uh, falling for one person or another. I don't know if you've ever uh, had this kind of summer or period like this, but I, I've had very few, but I've noticed that when I don't have much to do, all I have to do is sleep. That's when I'm the most, uh, that I have the hardest time sleeping. So uh, that state of mind seems to, yeah, it's probably something that Stéphane uh, Lafleur experienced himself. I love the acting in this movie too, especially her acting. Um, the, the little Martin too is, is extraordinary, but yeah, she's just uh, so natural and uh, I don't know, you can't help but kind of fall for her in this movie. C'est de m'endormir. Mais les baleines? C'est censé aider. Ça marche-tu? Ça marche pour moi.
une pensée chez vous Ah oui. Fait qu'est-ce qu'il t'a dit, ton beau Belinsky Hein ah, Tu devais pas lui dire qu'on partait Euh, ouais. Qu'est-ce qu'il a dit Hey, je la connais, cette face-là. Qu'est-ce qu'il y a? Tu vas m'aïr. Ben non. Jamais. Pour qui ou Véronique Simon? T'as le gagnant, qu'est-ce que tu fais? Ta minute! T'aurais pu me le dire quand c'était le temps que tu veux pas partir! C'est pas que je veux pas. C'est juste compliqué avec mon loyer pis tout. J'habite pas chez mes parents, moi. Quoi? C'est pas ça que je voulais dire. Non, mais tu viens de le dire? Non, je voulais dire que. Avec le char pis tout. Que... Hé, hey, tu sais quoi? Dans le fond, là, t'es juste une maudite agace. Hein? Ah, t'es une guédoune! Calme-toi, là! Fuck you! Ben, c'est ça. Fuck you toi-même. I, I was looking, I was searching uh, to see what kind of Sté wow. music Stefan Lafleur plays, and you know. I think this is the sort of music he plays. It's like folk rock, uh, is what they call it, so it, that might be the link there. Don't you love those paintings in the background of, uh, of the two kids? Non, t'as connu le soir. Ah, le GF, il connaît pas, lui. Ah, ouais, donc. C'est quoi? C'est rien. Ben, si ça raconte pas, c'est moi qui vais raconter. J'étais dans un chalet avec des amis. Lily et moi, on était ensemble quand ça s'est passé, mais elle était pas là. Ça fait que je suis dans le chalet. Il y a plein de monde que je connais pas. Dont deux sœurs japonaises. OK. Deux sœurs cute. Ça fait que la soirée passe. Tout le monde boit pas mal. Puis, ben. Je sais pas trop comment puis pourquoi, mais je me retrouve dans un lit avec les deux sœurs japonaises. Toute la nuit. Quoi? C'est ça. Mais non, c'est pas ça, là. Ben, c'est la raison que c'est passé après, ce que Lily a dit. Tu as dit à Lily? Ben, quand je suis revenu chez nous, je me sentais mal, fait que j'ai raconté ce qui s'était passé. Qu'est-ce qu'elle a dit? Elle a dit, tu sais, pas de vie. Hein. Je peux être bien des affaires, mais je peux pas être deux sœurs japonais. Wow. Je l'ai pas, mon gars. Bon, dis ton tatou. Non. Ah, oh, il Tu veux juste me niaiser? <rire> C'est quoi? Je l'ai fait faire quand j'ai su qu'il était enceinte. Non, oh, il me mène un hippocampe, Il s'est fait tatouer un fucking hippocampe. Mais quoi? C'est le roi de la mer? Mais non, c'est pas le roi de la mer, là. Qui c'est que t'as dit ça? C'est qui, d'abord? Je suis dessus, moi. Mais c'est pas l'hippocampe, là, c'est clair. Ah, oh. ils m'ont dit. <rire> Allô? On y aise, là. Wow! Comment ça? 
Vous êtes où, là? Non, 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 non. J'arrive, là, tu bouges pas. Lily est à l'hôpital. C'est qui? Je sais pas trop. Attends, on Si la veille ensemble, une chose à mettre au monde. Je sais. C'est quoi le secret? Qu'est-ce qui se passe? Rien. C'est la petite soeur de mon ami. des amis. C'est facile d'enseigner ma classe, hein? Je vais juste leur montrer des films. dans mon bureau deux minutes. Là, là? Qu'est-ce qui se passe, Nicole? De quoi, ça? Tu veux vraiment qu'on joue à ça? Mais je sais pas de quoi vous parlez. Est-ce que c'est vrai que t'es parti avec des vêtements sans les payer? Ben... J'ai... Hein? Y a quelqu'un qui te veut partir avec des vêtements sans les payer. Plusieurs fois. Est-ce que c'est vrai? Mais... Mais... C'est des affaires données que ça change. Est-ce que tu sais que c'est du vol, ça? Quoi? Ben non. Mais oui. Bon, je vais pas porter plainte, là, mais... Ben, je suis obligée de te demander de partir. OK. Ben, je le ferai plus. Promis. 
Ça va être ta mère, hein? Ça y ressemble même beaucoup, je trouve. Hey, t'es content, hein? C'est ça que tu voulais? Que je me fasse mettre dehors? C'est ça que t'as trouvé mieux à faire que ta petite tête de mongol? <rire> oh my god! <rire> C'est l'histoire d'une fille qui, qui passe l'été chez elle et qui n'a qui rien à faire. C'est <coughs> Puis qui. Euh, c'est ma faute, c'est pas grave. Elle est pas euh, insomniaque. Elle ne peut pas dormir. Elle a de la difficulté à dormir. Salut Nicole. Oh. Salut Martin. Qu'est-ce que tu fais de bon? Mmh, je me bourre la face, là. Toi. Je m'excuse, mais la carte passe pas. Hein? Comment ça? Mais je sais dessus, moi. Euh, C'est correct, Mélanie. Je vais le prendre. Et ça va être une slot chausserie pour moi, s'il te plaît. Ça me fait plaisir. Ah, écoute ça un petit peu, juste pour que tu... Et juste que tu entendes le garçon parler. Tu trouves pas que ça sonne différent le soir comme ça? On dirait que tout est au ralenti. Et il faut vraiment que tu goûtes à ça. Lui, il est, il est amoureux d'elle, euh, oui. mais il est trop jeune pour elle, c'est sa gardienne. Puis il lui dit, tu sais, l'amour, euh, Nicole, un jour, je vais être plus grand, là, pour pouvoir... Euh... On est assez vieux pour pas se compter des mentries. Au moins, j'aurais essayé. <rire> c'est génial, hein? Attends-moi deux minutes. Mais je pense que mon frère va venir avec sa nouvelle blonde. Ah ouais? Ouais. Salut, Maud. Salut, Tommy. Hey, Nicole. Salut. Salut, Nicole. Félicitations. Merci. Merci. Vous devez être content. Ouais, ben, c'est beaucoup d'organisation, là, comme on dit. La cérémonie, puis... Tout, là, je... Juste savoir où on a seulement nos souper, c'est pas compliqué, là. J'imagine. En tout cas, c'est certain que tu vas être invité. Ah, mais euh, je pense pas que je vais pouvoir y aller. Même plate, ça. Ouais. T'as l'air bien. Je vais aller aux toilettes, moi. Fini par t'avoir, l'amour de Cloutier. 
c'est moi qui ai demandé. Ah. Tu sais, il y a du monde qui passe leur vie à chercher un but. Moi, j'ai comme compris que ça de m'occuper de monde. Prendre soin d'elle. C'est ça mon but. C'est tout. Puis toi? Il était bon? Ouais. Je pars en voyage. Ah oh, ouais. Quoi? Ben, finalement. Je m'en vais en Islande. C'est ton genre, ça. Tu vas voir les geysers. J'ai étudié ça dans mes cours. Ah oh, ouais? Oui. C'est un peu comme des volcans. C'est comme euh, des sources d'eau souterraines. Puis euh, quand ça chauffe trop puis qu'il y a trop de pression, ben ça finit par sortir. En tout cas, je suis content pour toi. Comment il va? Bon, ben, salut, Nicole. T'es rendu où, là? Chez mes parents. Ah. On part en voyage bientôt. Ah, ben, ça serait le fun, là, qu'on qu s'organise quelque chose à un moment donné, là. Peut-être avant que tu partes. Je penserais pas. Ouais. Bon, ben, bye. Bye, Nicole. Je suis venu chercher mon bessic. Ah, OK. J'ai croisé Tommy tantôt. Ah ouais? Changé, hein? Je l'avais dit. Mmh. 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 Je voulais m'excuser. De quoi? Euh... Ben... C'est correct. Je suis rendue habituée. Penses-tu que tu pourrais me rembourser le billet d'avion? Je veux dire, pas là, là mais... Euh, Peut-être bientôt. Ben... C'est parce que j'y vais pas. Ouais, mais... C'est parce que j'ai perdu ma job. Ah. Comment ça? Ben, C'est compliqué. Ben C'est juste que ce pas un super bon moment pour moi non plus. Parce que finalement, le garage, je pense pouvoir réparer Bébite, fait que... Ben, j'ai décidé de lui donner une dernière chance. OK. C'est correct. Ça presse pas. Je peux m'arranger. On s'appelle? OK. Bye. OK. Ça marche-tu, hein? Elle est là, je l'ai. Je vois! Je vois voler la bicyclette! 
On vole pas le basic, madame, c'est à moi! Je vous la police! Je vous dis que c'est à moi, le basic! Madame, tu me déconcentres, là! Oh, moi, je crois pas que c'est moi! Tommy, guéri, toi? T'es-tu malade? That's the woman who's married to the guy who was in the car in, in real life. So they're not playing a couple in this film, but everybody's connected here. Bye, Martin! Bye. Bye. Dépose-moi ici, Joe. Non, je ne peux pas te laisser derrière. Oui, non, hop. Oh, moi aussi, je suis touché. Ah, ça fait très mal, mais qu'est-ce qu'on fait On reste ici. On ne bouge pas, non, va. Bon. Ah. That was Fanny Mallet, uh, who played the mother, and uh, yeah, she's, she's just great in everything she does. She's a real character actor. Tu joues à quelque chose? Tu veux-tu qu'on prenne notre bain? Je peux pas prendre mon bain que toi, Martin. So Fanny Mallette was also in, um, in Familiar Grounds, directed by Stéphane Lafleur. Also, the uh, I'm I'm forgetting his name now, but the guy who plays the love interest, you know, the guy that she's interested in, he, he was also playing in that movie, Familiar Grounds. It's a C'est pas un cowboy, ça. Mais oui. Mets ton chapeau pour voir. Cowboy. Shirley Temple on the rock. Hey, hey, Guzman. Est-ce que je peux en avoir un autre? Non. That's call. C'est l'heure d'aller te coucher. Encore cinq minutes. S'il te plaît. OK, d'abord. Est-ce que je peux regarder la TV avec toi? Je le dirai pas à ma mère. Promis? Promis. C'est Nicole. 
Je veux juste que tu saches que moi, je suis pas pressé. Fais tes affaires, va où tu veux. Je vais t'attendre. Nicole. Nicole. Still with me? Did uh, yep. Yep. your sleeping Nicole put you to sleep? What did you think of it? <clears throat> I really 
really enjoyed it. You didn't? No, 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 I did. I oh, did. you did. <laughs> Who, who's speaking? Nick. Oh, Nick. <laughs> yeah, you, it, it is. It's a great movie. Uh, so what do you like about it? Um, oh my God. Some of the scenes. I remember you were, talk, you were talking about the editing earlier in the movie, but some of those shots were also just so good. Uh, man, the tomato sandwich scene. <laughs> Ooh, wow. Yeah. It's got a bunch of gems like that. And I, I cut so much of the movie out, so if you really did enjoy it and uh, you might want to revisit it again, um, there's probably like another 45 minutes to the movie at least, you know? So, of course, it has a very particular pacing um, with it being so slow and all, uh, but it's, there's always something and it's just gorgeous to watch. So, I don't know, I've seen it maybe three, four times now and, and every time I, I like it even more. Anybody else? Uh, that I, I'd, I'd like someone else to, uh, to answer the question, if you could relate to the characters, um, not just for what they're going through, but for, you know, who they are, their age and state of mind. Perhaps the answer is no. I don't know about relating to the characters themselves, but I kind of like the vibe of the film felt very familiar. Mm. At first, I wasn't really super on board because it felt like very like uh, some of the scenes felt like they dragged on a little like a, just a little bit longer than they should have. And some of it like some of the editing choices made it feel very slow. Yeah. But, but as the movie went on, that like, you realize that that's kind of very intentional. And I don't know, I appreciated the art. And I had to come around to the, to the enjoyment of it, I guess I'd say. But I did, I did end up appreciating it more uh, near the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who, who was that? I just took off the spotlight. Uh, so now... Uh, it's Jake. I... Oh, Jake. Yeah. It, I, I recognize it's not for everybody. And I was even warned that a lot, a lot of the Champlain students don't appreciate black and white. When I mentioned to someone, oh, I'm going to be showing them this black and white film, they said, oh, you watch out with black and white Champlain students. They can have a, you know, uh, some resistance to that. But, uh, but it is just a gorgeous movie. And um, yeah, I should have squeezed in. I had a few minutes left. I should have squeezed in my interview with, uh, with Christophe. Uh, maybe I can find that. But I think it's in French anyway. So... Maybe I'll just let you off a little early today, since uh, I had some loose. And uh, it's also the, the, um, the first two films, or three films technically, but the first two filmmakers were so, you know, it's all about this kind of, uh, I don't know, political context. Uh, with separatism, and, and that's a big part of the Quebec identity. Um, this whole separatist um, movement and when I was younger it was much stronger much stronger when I was a kid like basically the age of, of uh, or younger than these kids more the age of Martin um, whom I'm sure you agree is the best character probably one of the best characters of, of Canadian film that year is that boy uh, with his lovely voice but, um, but what I, I, I realized watching the movie now, it's probably taking place in the 80s uh, to Darnica, just because of like the, the ice cream place and the, the look of the microwave and I don't remember what else. There was something else that I, I, I thought, oh, it's probably, this is probably not a contemporary story, but I thought it interesting watching it with you now in the context of the, of the two other filmmakers before, how um, blasé, these, the, the ones in Tudor Nicole are, they're, they're very blasé and, and you would talk to them about separatism or anything of the sort and it would just be like, and I guess that's, you have some youth that are more uh, politicized or activated, you could say, um, but I, I would say that the majority, you know, they're spending a summer 
off, uh, the, the, the furthest thing from their mind is any, any kind of political context. And that's the reality of most people, you know, young or older is, uh, so, you know, Canadian culture is, um, is vast indeed, but what these directors, you know, uh, Philippe, uh, Pierre Falardeau and uh, Robert Morin ended up expressing was something that I would say was much more adult uh, in terms of thematics and, and, and real concerns. Um, but for the general population, you're looking at, you know, uh, the kinds of characters we found in Sudal Nicole. So anyway, I, th I think this is really, th this class must have given you a, a much more realistic idea of the Quebec identity. So next week, we're, we're zoning in on Montreal. Um, and I have some really special movies to show you as well. So uh, until then, I wish you a really good week. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you uh, next time. Ciao, gang. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.